Okay. Should I wait for the one more person to show up before we start? Uh, well, we're yes. going to start the meeting regardless. Oh, okay. We just can't vote on anything. Yeah, we'll just have to announce that there's no quorum if that's if if, if that's yeah, we'll we'll give we'll give people a few more minutes here. Usually they'll, they'll trickle in the last moment. Well, I can tell an exciting story. Sure. Okay. So I got a message about picking up someone at the airport coming in from Hawaii tonight. He likes long walks anywhere because he's a dog. And I'm going to be driving him to a rescue in Monterey. But he's oh, nice. flying Hawaii. Yeah, his name is Champ. So. Okay, Chair, at 7 o'clock, I'm going to start the webinar. I was trying to help. I was trying to help spare some time. Okay, uh, I will do a call to order um, via teleconference. And we'll do a, oh, look at us, a roll call. There you go. Now we have a quorum. Yay, quorum. Oh, good. Thanks, Mr. So Sharma. Let's take, let's take the mm -hmm. roll. Um, let me see here. Commissioner Bratton. Commissioner Karumpis. Vice Chair Gaudenti. Present. Chair Hopkins, I hear you. Present, yep. Commissioner Sharma. Present. And Commissioner Patel. Present. So we have four present and Commissioner Benton and Commissioner Karup is absent. Okay, and then I'm going to move to oral communications. Um, members of the public will now have the opportunity to address the commission on topics not listed on tonight's agenda. This section is limited to 15 minutes and may be extended to con or continued after public hearings or general business uh, section of the agenda. Individuals are limited to one appearance with a maximum of up to three minutes per speaker. A reminder to the public, please raise your digital hand or dial nine, star nine, sorry, on the telephone if you wish to address the commission. City staff will ask you to unmute your microphone when it is your turn to address the commission. Do we have anybody? I yep. see no attendees, Chair. Okay, thanks. I do uh, see uh, Commissioner, uh, Council Member Melton. Yeah getting to that, but I wanted to make sure we had, if we had public people too. Um, first uh, up, however, we will have Council Member Melton with a special announcement. Great, uh, Chair Hopkins, thank you for that. And can I just check in Chair that you can hear me okay? Yes. Yes. I see, I see lots of heads nodding up and down. And commissioners of the Heritage Preservation Commission, my name is Russ Melton, Sunnyvale City Council member. And I have a real honor and privilege, pleasure to be here tonight to give some highly deserved recognition to one of your very own, your vice chair, Shauna Gaudenti. Now, Shauna, you're uh, sitting on my tile directly underneath me. So if I'm looking in that direction, that's because that's where Zoom has put your tile on my screen. Other people may be looking this way or that way, but um, Shauna here to uh, say thank you. Thank you, Shauna, for your contributions to the Heritage Preservation Commission. The city clerk reminds me that you started your service on the commission in October of 2018. So that's almost four years of service on the Heritage Preservation Commission. Some months, Shauna and all of our commissioners, some months you have meetings, some months you take a break because there's no business, but every month, Shauna, month in, month out, ready to get to work on behalf of the city of Sunnyvale. Um, it's been said before, and I'll say it again here tonight, um, as a member of the Sunnyvale City Council, and I know my colleagues agree, we count on our individual commissioners uh, bringing your knowledge, expertise, um, intellect, and thought uh, to the commission and partnering up with your fellow commissioners uh, to give advice to Sunnyvale City Council on important matters and also to make decisions in areas that lie within your jurisdiction. 
Uh, in this case, the Heritage Preservation Commission, every once in a while, we fire up a resource allocation permit that requires your thoughtful um, decisioning. And uh, I appreciate that. And I know my colleagues on city council do as well. Commissioner Gaudenti, um, you have your fingerprints on two very important policy documents that ultimately were improved, approved by Sunnyvale City Council. Uh, your name is on the July 2019 Design Guidelines for Murphy Station Heritage Landmark District. You worked on that. And uh, your name is on the August 2020 Downtown Specific Plan. You wanna talk about a big deal here in the city of Sunnyvale, getting downtown uh, out of uh, being stalled and moving forward. So I appreciate Commissioner Gaudenti, your work on that and the work of the entire Heritage Preservation Commission. Um, some of our commissions are specified in the charter of the city of Sunnyvale. Others are specified by ordinance or council policy. You guys know, uh, Commissioner Gaudenti, you probably know this commission is specified by the charter of the city of Sunnyvale. That's the um, number one policy document approved by the voters about how they want this city to be run. So this commission um, and your service on it Commissioner Gaudenti are specified by the charter of the city of Sunnyvale. And that's section 1015 and 1016. Um, Shauna, I think you probably got the whole uh, pre-pandemic experience and now the pandemic experience. So by my math, you probably did about a year and a half of in-person meetings and the last couple of years have been the Zoom meetings. And uh, I can speak for myself, I, I think I'm looking forward to, and I know a lot of people are looking forward to the day when we can reconvene our public hearings in person. I think that'll be a, a great moment for the city of Sunnyvale. Um, so Shauna, thank you again for your uh, nearly four years of service on the Heritage Preservation Commission. I'm sure Mayor Klein has something very nice for you at City Hall, a, a uh, commemoration uh, for your service. I know staff will take care of that. Um, and I wanna say to Commissioner Jenny Bratton, Commissioner Steve Karumpas, Chair Don Hopkins, Commissioner Sarosh Patel, and Commissioner Pamela Sharma, many of whom I see here on my screen here right now. Thank you so much all uh, for your hard work on the commission and circling back to you again, Commissioner Gaudetti, thank you from the Sunnyvale City Council for your service on the Heritage Preservation Commission. And um, Chair Hopkins, I'll just take the liberty to see if Vice Chair Gaudenti would like to turn on her microphone and maybe say a word or two. Um, and I'll hand it over to you, Shauna. Um, thank you. That was a surprise. Um, I've enjoyed my time. I think I got what I was looking for out of it and it led me to my job that I love. So I really couldn't ask for anything more. So thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Wonderful. So uh, Chair Hopkins, thank you for letting me uh, have a few minutes during public comment. And I'm gonna be sticking around for the rest of the meeting. So if I can be of service uh, at any point along the way in the meeting, please just let me know. And Chair Hopkins, I'll turn it back over to you. Oh, thank you very much um, for those kind words for a fabulous uh, commissioner member. Thank you, council member Melton. Uh, city staff, uh, do we have any members of the public that have shown up wishing to speak under oral communications? Chair, I don't see any attendees at this time. Thank you. Oh, okay, and I would like to welcome commissioner uh, Bratton um, to the meeting uh, so that she gets acknowledged as being present. Um, yeah, thank you. I'm sorry I'm late. I was coming from another meeting. No worries. I'm glad to join you guys tonight. Can I ask very quickly, who is presenter? Do you, does anyone else see presenter on their screen? Who's that? Oh, Vice Chair, that's our that's my second computer um, remote from work, just in case I need to share share um, hmm. uh, any reports or anything else. I don't have to use my main computer i have a secondary computer to, to show anything that may arise got it okay thank you yeah and just so jenny you know uh commissioner melton has very nice things to say about our uh i can say your name i really can um so you can always catch those on uh youtube um 
later if you would like. Um, and we'll move on to the consent calendar, 22-0627, uh, approved the Draft Heritage Preservation Commission meetings of March 2nd, 2022. Uh, the draft minutes are in the packet. Did anybody have any corrections to uh, any of the minutes? If we don't have any corrections, anybody is welcome to make a motion of their choosing. <clears throat> I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Fantastic. Do we have a second? A second. Sharma, thank you. Commissioner Sharma, I got it. Um, thank you very much. Uh, and I'll go ahead and take the uh, We'll take the vote, Commissioner Patel, to uh, approve the consent calendar, draft minutes of May. Approve. Uh, Commissioner Sharma. Approved. Chair Hopkins. Approved. Um, <clears throat> since there is a first and second, then uh, the motion passes with five yeses and one absent from uh, Commissioner Perumpas. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, uh, next we're opening the public hearing. General Benis, if you wish to speak uh, well, at the public hearing, general business item, please refer to the notice at the beginning of this agenda and the speakers. I don't think we have anybody present. Um, so we will do the 22-0602 review planning program budget and fees for fiscal year 2022-23. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna give you a brief overview of this year's budget. Uh, so this, the, the upcoming fiscal year, the 2022 and 2023 uh, budget is focused on the operating budget this year. Um, it rotates every year from an operating to a project's uh, specific budget. But uh, this, this coming year's uh, budget presents a cautiously optimistic outlook for, for near and long-term um, future. Um, and a lot of the reductions that were made in the past couple of years to the, to the pandemic have been restored. Uh, including uh, many uh, staff positions that were that were frozen. Uh, the budget also um, includes uh, continued in investment in infrastructure, um, as you can see throughout the city. Um, so overall, the HPC's work comes from the, the planning program in the Community Development Department, uh, or CDD. And the planning program's budget uh, is recommended to increase about 4.5%. Um, over to three and a half million dollars. And uh, overall in CDD, uh, the budget would be increasing 19 and a half percent to an overall of about $11.8 million. Uh, so um, permanent activity has increased since last year, but uh, as we all know with the HPC, it really hasn't. We typically hear about a couple um, public hearing applications, but we have been pretty busy at the planning commission level um, and other uh, staff level uh, permits. Um, our permits have become a lot more complex due to recent changes in state law, particularly for housing projects. Um, so we've been uh, adapting to that. Um, but uh, we, we do have some, some good um, uh, good news for the with the new budget. We've unfrozen four staff positions within CDD. Um, the plaque program has been funded to amount of thirty five hundred dollars. So if, if property owners are interested in, in participating, uh, we do have some funding for that. Um, the uh, the currently funded study issue for the uh, updating our resource uh, inventory for. Um, technological resources continues to be funded um, and uh, will be through the, the next year. Uh, we also have the, the three other um, HPC related study issues, the uh, update of our historical context statements to include contributions by Asian Americans and other um, minority groups. And then the um, uh, overall update of the heritage inventory 
and then the um, programs to increase visitation to heritage resources. Those will return for consideration next year. Uh, two of those were, were deferred um, at the budget workshop. And then um, the, uh, the historic context statement update was, was ranked, but, but fell below the line. So it'll also return for consideration um, next year. So um, that's, that's the recommended budget, budget in a nutshell. Um, the, the commission tonight has the option to make comments on the, uh, on the budget and, and make a motion uh, to, to recommend approval or, or add, add comments. And those will be passed towards or passed to the council at next Tuesday's uh, uh, hearing to consider the budget. And, uh, and then adoption of the budget is scheduled for June 21st. Uh, but that includes that concludes a uh, staff's presentation and available for any questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, George. Um, very informative as always. Um, does anybody have any questions of George? I do have a question. I feel a little bit. I don't want to use the word ignorant, but I do feel ignorant asking it. Um, you know, when I sometimes like the budgets I'm familiar in reading, um, usually there's like a revenue line item, right, in the expenses. And what I'm seeing is like projected expenses. But where, do, where does the um, actual revenue come from? Most of the yeah. planning programs revenue is mm -hmm. coming from permit activity. Mm -hmm. So these would be, you know, for, for planning permits, um, you know, and then overall in CDD, it's it's funded by a lot of uh, building permits um, okay. of fees as well. So for so, that, like eleven million dollars, like what portion of is, of that is like from permit? What is there taxes that contribute to it? Is there like a general fund you draw from? Yes, yeah, so I can take a look at the the breakdown here, but that that's just the overall um, operating budget. So that includes like the staffs cost. Um, in, in attachments, uh, one of the report, it has a, a breakdown of the budget by, um, you know, uh, staff costs, um, the, the funds that we're getting um, by different, um, you know, funds we have, the general fund, the uh, community development block grant fund, um, funds we have set aside for specific projects. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I understand that. I'm just wondering, like, where do you, where does the money come from? The twelve million that you're allotted, CDC is, uh, CDD is allotted. That's my question. From permits mm -hmm. and anything else, or just purely planning permits? Well, a lot of it is, yeah, from from planning permits. We also have some uh, funds set aside from the general general fund. Uh, as well, but I'm just kind of just skimming here. Chair mm -hmm. uh, sure, Hopkins, it's Russ. Do you mind if I jump in for a yeah. second? I, I think that that would be a welcome contribution. Mm -hmm. uh, first, I want to say I agree 1000% with everything that George just said, and Commissioner Bratton, great question. Uh, we have a number of departments in the city of Sunnyvale that draw their revenue, so to say, from the general fund. Mm -hmm. So the essence of your question is, where does the general fund revenue come from? Mm -hmm. And the big line item there is going to be property taxes. Mm -hmm. There's a whole uh, number of revenue sources, property taxes, sales taxes, um, transient occupancy, hotel taxes, um, utility taxes, but property taxes are the big one, Commissioner Bratton. Okay. And then those property taxes from the general fund fuel um, Department of Public Safety, a lot of mm -hmm. stuff that Department of Public Works does, parks, libraries, a lot of road maintenance, but then also CDD is a big consumer of um, general fund tax dollars. So that, that's the essence of how I would respond to your Thank question, you. Commissioner. Great question. Yeah, yeah that and, helps. And, and I'm so sorry, but I also just want to emphasize 
that CDD does collect fees. We expect that users of services in the city of Sunnyvale pay fees commensurate with the um, resources that they're consuming and CDD works very hard. And our residents, as many of us I'm, I'm sure have, um, have personally gone through, if you're remodeling your kitchen or just whatever and have to um, apply a fee towards the city of Sunnyvale. So that's a big part of it too. Thank you, Chair. Thanks. Thank you so much you for answering the question. Do we have any, uh, I'll note that uh, Commissioner Rumpus has uh, joined us as well. Um, and uh, did you have any other questions? I actually had a question. Um, so uh, the cataloging of the historical resources uh, not being included in the budget this year, uh, understand that there are bigger capital projects that need to be approved and, and infrastructure projects, mainly it looks like there are a lot of water projects um, in the pipeline that, that uh, definitely need to be done uh, for the city in the area. Um, but I guess my question is around what is the stop gap uh, from allowing us to get this itemized um, in the next say, you know, two to three years? because as time goes on, this is going to fall further and further below the line in terms of importance because there are other capital infrastructure projects that will take priority because of our aging infrastructure. So what is sort of you know, the cutoff? When is the timeline of like, well, we have to do this now before it's just too late? Um, I'm not sure if you have that answer, George, or it's kind of more of a philosophical question at this point, but um, you know, it, it becomes concerning as, as a commissioner on this uh, committee that uh, you know, it's not getting approved and that's the most important thing that, that we have and that we need to document um, to be able to, to move forward. So questions open to anybody. And I don't mean to put you on the spot, George, if, if it's not something that's, uh, that you have the answer to. Oh, no, I, I definitely understand the, that, that, that comment. I mean, it, I, I would just say there's there's just a lot of competing interests we have and a lot of other study issues, but um, it will be reviewed again next year. But um, I think that might be a, a comment we can include in the, the minutes that we, um, we pass on to the council for their, their consideration possibly next year. Yes, and specifically, as I mentioned, what is you know the deadline? Like we need to get it done, and I'm, I'm going to put this put this I, out there to yeah. 2023. I, um, I don't think there is a, a deadline, um, but but yeah, there is just continual pressure to develop uh, more properties in Sunnyvale. It's it's still a, a hot market out there, um, so that that naturally just puts pressure on. Um, you, you know, uh, existing resources. Um, it's it's something we, we have to look at when we were, we see a um, an older building proposed for demolition. It does it have uh, if it's not on our inventory, should it be? And that's typically something we 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 do a uh, or we commission a study for for each project to look at buildings over forty five years old to see if they are eligible for for consideration. Um, we we've, we've had that with the uh, development of the, Mello, the former Mellows property at uh, Matilda in California, where um, the current 23andMe building is. Um, that, because there was an old home that the Mellows owned, uh, the, the family that owned the, uh, the farm there. Um, and that was, that was retained as part of it uh, because we, we did do a uh, analysis of that structure and the, the environmental impact that was the report that was done at that time. Uh, recommended it be be retained. So we do have some some protections, but but yeah, the the overall update is is still a you know priority for the city. It's it's just it, it, you know there's there are other kind of near term factors that are also competing for for interest. Um, George, but I don't, I don't think we have a specific about, um, other heritage, uh, not just buildings but trees that are coming down all over the place. What about that? Um, how do we how do we figure out what uh, trees are on on the inventory before that's too late? Well, the trees the the heritage trees are on the inventory. The specific heritage trees. Um, but yeah, fortunately, we haven't had any recent proposals to remove any any heritage trees. Um, but yeah, we do we do have regular requests for removal of protected trees, which are 
different than heritage trees because they're protected because they're of a certain size. Um, heritage trees, they're protected, they have different protections because they have some specific uh, cultural or, or historic significance to Sunnyvale. Um, are, are you asking how you get more added? Yeah, I, I'd like to see more added to the list only because of, you know, um, some of these trees, some of, a, lot, a lot of redwoods are bigger and they're nice and don't think they should be coming down. They house a lot of animals uh, and they, you know, they're, they're bigger than 36 inches in circumference and should be added to the inventory. And I don't know how to go about putting that kind of stuff on the inventory um, other than just suggesting that it goes on. But, um, you know, like, like that grove, that redwood grove of 17 trees that went down over by Stratford was a shame and should not have happened. Um, and so I don't know how to, fight for that i'd like to fight for that kind of stuff a little bit more often a little bit harder than just letting that stuff happen to allow cars to pick, pick kids up and create massive traffic um in the mornings and things like that that was just a, a bad mess i think and so i would want to be a little bit more aggressive on this commission to to to, to stop things like that happening in sunnyvale um so that that doesn't happen anymore um, so, so how do we, you know, does, does this get pushed aside as well based on budgets? No, those would, you know, so if there are specific trees that, um, any member of the public or, or commissioner would like to nominate, there is a separate process to, to nominate new resources and that that's not affected by the, the budget. Did that answer your question or did you? So, so basically what you're saying is we got to come in and nominate specific trees one at a time to try to. Right. And then, you know, on the inventory list. Yeah. There has to be some kind of a backing study that, that shows that there is specific cultural historic uh, significance for, for a particular tree that you're nominating. So, so usually that involves, you know, hiring a consultant that can, that can you know, verify that. Um, but, you know, for all other trees in the, in the city, I mean, if they are of a protected size, uh, they're, they're protected by just by its, their size itself. So someone would need to get a, a permit from the city to remove it. And there's certain findings that would have to be made in order to remove it. It, it can't just be just because the property owner doesn't like it or wants to remove it for convenience. There has to be a specific reason um, in alignment with our findings, such as the tree is dead or disease dying, it, it could pose an imminent threat to a, a nearby structure um, and other, other types of considerations in that line. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Uh, I do have another question, Chair Hopkins. Absolutely. Uh, Far away. Uh, so this question is regarding SB9 and how does that work with the heritage sites that we currently have cataloged? Do we have clarification on that? We do. Um, so we do have a, a local ordinance in response to the, the state Senate Bill 9, which um, allows uh, the densification of, of single family sites. But we don't, we don't permit that type of uh, process on sites that are in our, our heritage uh, resource list. Okay. Okay, so everything that's currently on the list, those sites cannot be uh, developed. Correct. Over. Okay. Correct. All right. And but this would impact future sites if we nominated them. Right. Okay. Is there a review process that happens or what's that the um, I guess how do the parameters of SB9 uh, get reviewed in conjunction with adding something to the heritage list? I guess that's my question. Like in Commissioner yeah. Campus's example, if you were to nominate trees, would that also go through the SB9 filter process to get on that list? Well, it, it would. So if, if there's any kind of heritage resources, whether it's a structure or tree, um, if it's on an eligible site for, for an SB9, Nine kind of up, uh, up 
uh, of sizing and density, you know, adding additional units, it's not possible because uh, any, any type of heritage uh, site that has a heritage resource, uh, you know, you can only build to the standard zoning. You can't um, add the additional units that uh, SB9 would allow for. So anything that's on our list right now, you, you can't do um, uh, SB9, or we, we, all, we call it a, a duo or dual uh, urban opportunity site where you could potentially have up to four units on a single family site. Okay. So if, if, if let's say someone wanted to pose that in the Tay Francis neighborhood where we have many historic resources, it's, it's not possible because that, that's our heritage resource site. Got it. Thank you. Good question. Any other questions? I, I think I have one um, regarding the 30, I think it was 3,500 for the plaque program. Is that correct? Yes. Um, is that, I think we talked about it and I don't remember where that went, but um, about doing a mailing to all the current property owners to see about them so they know or are aware of the plaque program so they can know about participating and whether that budget is including that or whether we work on that budget separately. How I think here. that was done separately after the, the ordinance right. changes passed. Okay. 2020, I believe. Okay. 19, or late 19. But nobody grabbed at the design. No, we haven't had any applicants yet for the plaque program, but uh, that's, that's a good comment about increasing the visibility of that. Yeah, maybe doing another mailing now that people are out and about and busy doing things again. I don't know, fingers crossed. Um, any other questions from anybody else? Sure, okay. Hopkins, it, it's yep. Russ. Do you, do you mind if I just chime in with a couple of additional thoughts on um, the very good discussion that I've heard here tonight? Absolutely, please do. I, I just wanted to say thank you to um, Commissioner Bratton and Commissioner Karumpas and Commissioner Sharma for your excellent observations and, and comments. Commissioner Sharma, um, I think I heard you mention water infrastructure briefly, which is a really big deal, not only in Sunnyvale, but in the state of California. You know, we have um, a, a, a significant amount of dollars earmarked over the next 20 years and in, in the tens of millions of dollars for rehabilitating our underground network of water pipes, right? Not something that you see every day, but something that has to happen well. We also have tens of millions of dollars allocated for uh, rehabilitation of our underground sewer pipes. So those are the sorts of things, Commissioner Sharma, that I, I think of right away when I hear people talk about water infrastructure and then I think about sewer infrastructure and all of that really important stuff. Um, you also touched on, Commissioner Sharma, briefly, um, the legendarily difficult process of getting study issues across the finish line here in the city of Sunnyvale. And I, I agree with everything that Mr. Schroeder just said about competing interests. And the, the, way, the way I look at it, Commissioner Sharma, for, for CDD specifically, is um, they have a number of Herculean tasks underway right now at the direction of city council. Um, they're working on the El Camino Real specific plan, which we hope to adopt later this month, the Moffat Park specific plan. They're working on the housing element as directed by the state of California. Um, village center specific plan. So um, those are sort of like the top four things, George, that I think of when I think of what CDD is working on, plus any number of applications for our residents. And, and that's just my way of saying, um, uh, please don't get discouraged. Anybody on any commission, keep generating the great ideas because time will come for the ideas. It's just maybe not this year, maybe next year, but you know, as long as the issue uh, continues to be deferred, right? There's always next year. And then when we get to the point in my mind where CDD has cleared El Camino off the docket, Moffat Park off the docket, the housing element is approved by California. You know, that's, that's the time when these items that have been deferred get pushed across the finish line. So I remain optimistic and I, I hear what you're saying loud and clear. Commissioner um, Karupas, 
Um, I, I like where you're going with trees, which is a, a topic in Sunnyvale that will always generate a lot of interest. We have advocacy groups that just focus specifically on how do we increase the canopy of trees here in the city of Sunnyvale. And I, I think that's a, an awesome effort. That group is called SUFA. Um, so you can look them up and, and learn more about their advocacy efforts. I think I hear you, Steve, talking about um, sort of a policy question, which is the protection of trees and how do we go about protecting more trees? What I would encourage you to do, Commissioner Krumpus, through Chair Hopkins, is work with staff to um, increase an understanding of the existing policy. And then it's a question of how would you propose changing the policy to protect more trees? Um, and then ultimately policy um, sits with city council. But um, I just wanted to encourage you to continue exploring that conversation to achieve the policy objective, Steve, that you have in mind. And um, thank you, Chair Hopkins, for letting me chime in. Thank you very much. I had to silence for a moment because my dog's barking. Um, but thank you very much uh, for uh, your kind thoughts. Um, and before I finish up, any last questions that anybody's come up with? I don't, I don't have a last question, but I just want to um, support Commissioner Karimbas in his passion for trees because what he feels, what, what he's feeling about the redwoods being destroyed um, near Stafford was the same feeling I had when the whole grove of um, persimmon trees were were basically destroyed at the Mellows property. And that's what brought me here was because I was like, no, you know, like that was hurtful. Like that hurt me, even though I know it's just trees, but it was just such a beautiful tree. And I mean, a grove. And, you know, I, I would have wanted, if I had a chance to champion some type of, at least saving some trees on that property as it was, none of them were saved, right? So, so uh, Commissioner Krumpus, I just wanna personally say that I, I know what, what you're feeling. And, um, yeah. and again, that was the reason why I'm here is because I said, how come no one spoke up for those trees? And no one, not even one, you know, not even just one with a little plaque saying this used to be a grove of persimmon trees here for a hundred yeah. years or how many, many years it were. Um, so, so that's, um, so, so yeah, I would champion any type of um, activism around saving trees or planting more trees. Well, so I, I think I think that. as um, um, as 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 was pointed out earlier, I think the I think it was um, let me I'm sorry I'm. I'm need to look but I think that the the groups uh, that was called out earlier um, by councilman um, Melton was was the 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 uh, the uh, uh, what is it the coalition what was it SEPA you said it was um, SUFA I believe that's right Commissioner Krumpus um, Sunnyvale Urban Forest Advocates if I'm recalling the acronym correctly so I'd like to find out what they're, what they're doing because I guarantee you there's quite a bit of uh, of action there of what they've done and see how we can potentially team up with them from a uh, from a heritage standpoint to see what what more we can do to preserve some of these trees that really could be considered you know potentially heritage trees and and what those policies are. So um, so I'd like to look into that a little bit more and and maybe. Uh, Commissioner Bratton, that's something you can join me in on that one. We can kind of follow up on that and bring it back to the, bring it back to the, to the, um, to the group, if that makes sense. I think that does make sense. And we can talk with George and uh, Joey about potentially having a item uh, on the agenda at some point about that being uh, discussed, I guess. Um, I do think that we, um, do we need to make any sort of vote on that or just submitting comments? Yeah, so the, the commission can make a, a recommendation on the budget and can include comments and then um, we'll, we'll forward over the draft minutes to the, the council for next, next Tuesday's hearing. 
Um, so if, if there is a, a motion to, to recommend and if there's any comments specifically, uh, we'll, we'll include the minutes which, which already reflect these, but if there's any specific comments, um, happy to, to include those. Well, I don't have any other comments. I, I moved to approve, but maybe my one comment is I feel like uh, it is fairly conservative. Like when I look at the changes reflected in the budget, they're very conservative changes, you know, very low percentage. So um, so I, I don't have an issue with it. I mean, on the other hand, <laughs> it, it would be nice to um, actually in, increase the increase the budget if there were availability of funds because it seems to be on the low end of things. I know um, in my organization, um, when we were looking at um, increasing contributions to people's um, salaries, we did a 3.5 COLA across the board. And so like what I see here, like 2% or less than 3% seems a, seems a bit low on the low end. And um, across our programs, we're looking at, um, in the organization that I'm involved in, um, we're looking at you know increases of eight percent to reflect inflation. So again, I don't see that uh, reflected here. Eight percent increase to, um, yeah, to allow for inflation. So uh, so that's just my my own personal observation. But I do move to. Uh, I guess if it's approved, uh, I don't know. Move to. Uh, or, or, yeah, that, or yeah, I don't know. Is it approved approval? or um, rec we we support the recommendation that's being made? Okay. Do we have a second? A second. Okay. Was that was that Vice Chair Gaudenti or? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Gaudenti with her last second. Well done. <laughs> I can go ahead and do the vote if you guys are ready. I believe we are. Commissioner Sharma. Approve. Chair Hopkins. Thumbs up. Commissioner Karumpas. Approve. And lastly, uh, Commissioner Patel. Approve. So we have now uh, six zero. The motion passes to uh, recommend the uh, budget to city council as uh, presented. Okay, awesome. Good job, guys. And thank you, George and uh, Council Member uh, Elton, for all your help in uh, answering all of our questions. And good job, you guys, for bringing up a whole bunch of uh, awesome. Uh, comments. Um, now we move on to studying, uh, standing item of consideration of potential study issues. Anybody have anything to mention here? I have something that came up in a presentation I did for the, was it the library and friends, George? Is that right? Uh, it was for the, the neighborhood association. Uh... Oh, li for library. Okay. I can't but remember. Yeah, the, the library uh, and recreation services staff. Uh, okay. Help staff um, it. Yes. And somebody brought up uh, an interesting question that I thought could get incorporated possibly into the one we deferred on the um, tour of uh, uh, historical sites. And she had mentioned um, how we have a lot of streets that help have names that are, hold his, historic significance to the city of Sunnyvale. Um, and uh, what we were doing to think about that part of Sunnyvale's history. Um, and I was like, I don't know that we've ever actually considered that. So I'm just putting it out there. Oh, John, go ahead, Commissioner Godenti. We have brochures about that at the museum. With the oh. So. oh, excellent. It's already done. Uh, oh, good. Um, so, uh, maybe those can be helped incorporated into the the walking tour bike tour that we do but I didn't actually know that we had those so now I need to stop by and help you out with some stuff and check that out because I didn't know so thank you um good to know 
um anybody else have anything i just wanted to mention that because it was a clever idea by some, so. well just as an aside um uh, my father-in-law was um, worked in the city planning office in the 1960s and he named a lot of the streets in sunnyvale oh yeah mm-hmm. so he's like he can, yeah like he can share the process <laughs> i guess there's like a big book somewhere oh cool like we, the bird lands and the, yeah the, yeah mm-hmm. so he, he can tell you how things were named and where the naming is came from if well, we, we still use that today for for new streets which are, yeah. are mostly in, in new you know townhome developments and other, other types of development but we have a you know themes for each area so you know mm-hmm. birdland is, is all birds and then uh, we have other areas like california places um plants, trees, that, that type of thing. And it depends, you know, geographically and then in the direction, but we still use that as system today. Mm-hmm. So it still, still works pretty well. Very cool. Well, maybe it's something we can, like I said, incorporate into that whole walking tour um, that we're thinking about. So that's good to know. That's really cool, Jenny. Um, oh, sorry, Commissioner Bratton. Um, apologize. Um, uh, if we have other study issues, we move on to non-agenda items and comments. I had a question regarding in-person uh, commission meetings. Uh, do we have a timeline when those will begin or is it still virtual for the foreseeable future? It's still virtual for the foreseeable future, but I believe it is being reviewed every every month, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. to see if it's... Um, it, it just depends on, you know, just the uh, the situation with the, the pandemic. But um, you know, it is something I think the council is interested in in returning to the person. But uh, just kind of taking a wait and see approach. Thanks. It's true. Some of you have never been seen us in person. We're only a tile on a screen. <sighs> These days, chair, looking head. <laughs> chair, chair Hopkins, it's it's Russ. I, I I'd love to jump in on Commissioner sure. Sharma's question, which I which I think is excellent, and I I can only speak for myself, Commissioner Sharma. I think there's a, a huge advantage of meeting in person when it's safe and practical to do so. Um, it's just the cards haven't been with us. And so the state of California has provided flexibility to agencies like the city of Sunnyvale to make individual local decisions at the council level. And then we make the decision from council with regards to all the boards and commissions. And I cannot um, say how all the council members look at it, but what I look at is um, safety first. Where are we with the pandemic? Um, Are there any new variants coming out? And I'll I'll just mention to the commission, one of the things that I look at is um, Stanford University um, has a program where they test wastewater, sewer wastewater in many different municipalities and and, uh, folks who are much smarter than I am about this stuff, they say that's a leading indicator as to what your community is going to look like three weeks, six weeks, whatever down the road. So I'll just mention, you know, those results that Stanford publishes on a daily basis coming right from Sunnyvale's wastewater treatment plant is is something that I look at. And I think um, George said it exactly right. The the view of council as I see it is um, sort of wait and see, um, maybe some cautious optimism that we'll be able to convene sometime soon in the, in the forthcoming months. Until then, thank you for your patience and continuing to meet on Zoom. Still important to get the people's business taken care of. Definitely. So thank you. Uh, anybody else have any comments? Um, besides the fact that we're going to very much miss our our dear Commissioner Godinti. Um, and you're welcome back anytime. Um, so don't be afraid, um, particularly when we're in person. Show up anytime, all the time. Um, and we'll have to make sure we can go, go visit her at the uh, Sunnyvale History Historic Museum. So do that. Um, and uh, information only reports um, and items. Anything for there? No, I just wanted to, on behalf of the planning staff and, and community development, just thank uh, Vice Chair uh, Gaudenti for her four years of service. Uh, really appreciated. Um, 
all the meetings that, that she's attended and, and as uh, council member Melton um, uh, stated earlier, uh, you've been a part of, of some big planning efforts, the, the Murphy uh, uh, Heritage District guidelines, which are gonna be used for, for years to come. Uh, the, the plaque program, um, and uh, also, you know, just some other uh, specific, like the downtown specific plan and the heritage trees that were over there, um, other various types of applications that have come in. Um, really appreciate your insights um, and uh, just, just uh, you've been a great asset to the, to the commission. So we're, we're definitely gonna miss you here, um, but uh, we wish you the best in your uh, future efforts. So thank you. Yep, good luck. And if any of you have not been to the museum, please come and see what we have there. Because I hear it every single week. We didn't know you were here. We had no idea this place existed. And it's, ah. You're talking about by the community center? Yes. Yeah. You definitely should come. There's some things you'd love to see. Yeah, I think it's, I, I like to go over there just to talk with uh, Charlie Olson, to be honest with you, and sit and chat with him about stuff you know um that's also fun and buying stuff from him and if apricots or uh, the cherries are for sale now um but yeah no i will definitely stop in and i haven't been in there for a little while so i'd be happy to it's a beautiful beautiful site it is okay uh any last comments or anything from anybody or are we all stoked and happy i have to look at my watch See what time it is um, because I will be adjourning the meeting at 7 50. So well done, folks. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. See you next Have time. A good evening. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Well, George, can you stay on for a second? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Okay. Oh, I, I didn't bring this up because I was like, it's already passed and it's a moot point now. But, you know, like for the Art and Wine Festival that is this weekend, um, maybe in the future we could like have a table or 